Just living my life, just living my life, just living my life. Just living my life, just living my life, just living my life. It's my time. Just living my life, just living my life, just living my life. It's my time. Just living my life, just living my life, just living my life. It's my time. I came from Philly, then I moved to Harrisburg. Spent time in Cali, blowing on the rarest herb. Made some bread, was a manager then. Good at dealing with people, couldn't handle the pen. Money had me scrambling like Randall back then. Ups and downs with my chick, hold the hands in the man What's the dough really mean without family and love? Still go for your dreams, but put family above All the shallow shit, people try to take you off your path You don't allow that shit Stop wanting love from those that don't know you Appreciate your folks that seen what you go through Why would I stop? I don't even know how Papa Zan, that's the only way I slow down I could entertain y'all, but I'm no clown Puff and puff on that L till it blows down Just living my life, just living my life Just living my life Just living my life, just living my life Just living my life just living my life. Just living my hey everyone, we are in. We are live. Uh, actually, we're not live. That's a that's a lie. Um, so we're back. Interviews everyday people. Um, I'll let you guys introduce yourselves here. No, oh, what's up? It's uh, <laughs> my name is Joey Tevadino. Um, I try comedy. It's eleven thirty at night. We're doing a podcast on a Friday night. This is amazing. Yeah. So, uh, oh shit. Oh, go, yeah, ahead, go ahead. Oh, I'm Jared McCalley. I'm uh, also a comedian as well. Uh, and it's uh, now eleven thirty one. Michele Tepadino. So, so if you see on a certain Banging Beers episode where I'm wearing the same clothes, that's because I am. And mm. we, we did a back-to-back episode, so... so we were here. Yeah. So if I'm a little toasted, uh, don't don't hold against me, right? Well, I might. <laughs> Do you so, edit this, or is this... No. So whatever you oh, hear, no. whatever you hear from start to finish is exactly what goes oh, out. Oh, wow. Okay. Unless you say something I'm just crazy, gonna and I silent. have to... Okay. Like the stuff Joe was saying on the car on the way here? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. What did I say on the car? Oh, I forget. You want to repeat it? No. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. I didn't say anything. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, what 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 guys? I, no, I've I've met you and hung out with you a few times and seen your yeah your your stuff. I, yep, this is the first time us meeting. Right, thank Super you. excited. Where are you from? Uh, I'm actually from outside of the Lanc- Lancaster area. Okay. Yeah, originally, yeah, uh, between Reading and Lancaster is where I grew up. Okay. Yeah. I actually don't know where you're from. Where are you? Um, upstate New York. Originally? Yeah. Where do you live now? Uh, Ephrata, Pennsylvania. Ephrata. Yeah, it's like a big church, religious town. How do you how do you fit in there? I don't. I'm never there, so it doesn't matter. I'm always working or doing open mics. So. Now, I'll be interviewing in a couple weeks girlfriend, fiance, friend. Oh, yeah. Helen Kauker, yes. my girlfriend. Yeah. She's okay. like an art. She's in Japan right now. Really? Yeah. What is she doing there? She's uh, with her new boyfriend. No, um, she <laughs> is. No, she's just uh, she's with her family. She's hanging out on vacation. So, Is she's her family a, Japanese? Yes. Oh. She's Japanese. <laughs> no. She is. Uh, her, her aunt and uncle live in Japan. Like really? They do, yeah, they do. Like, uh, so if I if we ever travel to Japan, we could crash at her uncle's house. Yeah, if that, we just randomly go to Japan really quick, eighteen hour flight. I, I want to go to Japan. Yeah, yeah, I'd probably starve though because I'm a picky eater and yeah. things like fish. Really, you I can. I'm not, I can't fly on the plane, man. They'd have no. to knock me out. It's an eighteen hour flight. I'd lose my shit. I'd fucking. I'd be screaming. I'd be like, "Get me off the plane! Get me off the plane! Just, Get me off the plane!" I'd, I'd lose my shit. Yeah, <laughs> like I'm a horse a tranquilizer. Yeah, <laughs> they'd have to duct tape duct tape me to the the seat. So What's the longest flight you've ever taken? Uh, three hours uh, to Florida. No, it was like two and a half hours to Florida, and I took 10 Xanax. Really? And I was still nervous Ten? as fuck. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> 10 Xanax. Yeah. That's, I was, uh, that's, very, a, that's a good time. Yeah. Well, it wasn't. <laughs> I was horrified. <laughs> you were still anxious? Oh, my God, yeah. Insanely anxious, yeah. I, yeah. Why? Because I, I, I can't... I have to have control. I, I can't, like... <laughs> Why is he smiling? He's smiling so big. Like he's, I have to like if, if it I crashes, feel like you're gonna die anyway. I don't care about crashing. That's not even what's on my mind. It's like I feel stuck. Like I can't like get like if we were like enclosed in like a tube right here, I'd be freaking out. I'd be like, I want to. I gotta get out. I gotta get out. Like, I don't know. I have claustrophobia. It's Wait, because you can't fly the plane. No, I just uh, I didn't know we were gonna be talking about this, but uh, now that we are, <laughs> we're just uncovering your deepest fears. Yeah, yeah. I can't go through. I can't drive through tunnels either. I have to. 
switch places with whoever's driving and that I have to close my eyes. Have you ever like? <laughs> <laughs> have you it's ever? It's not like, real. That's real. Have wow. you ever like accidentally like get to one? You're like, oh fuck, I can't switch now and have to go through one. What do you mean? Oh, a tunnel? No, no, no. no. Like no, traveling no. somewhere. No, What's really funny is uh, I'll close my eyes <laughs> when I go through a tunnel. I'll, I'll like close my eyes a little bit just so I can see the road and I'll pretend that there's like clouds and stuff. But the Lincoln Tunnel and the Holland Tunnel, I can't do it. No. Got to switch places, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. 10 Xanax, really? Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's a lot of Xanax. That's yeah. a lot of Xanax, yeah. yeah. And I was there in Miami for three days and I, I felt like I was high the whole time on Xanax because... Probably awesome. It, um, yeah, it was a really good time. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. The longest I ever did, I think, is four and a half. Where? Uh, to Vegas. So I went to. I've only ever flown or vacationed in two places, and that was um, uh, Florida. We went to Florida for Disney, and then we went to Vegas. No, actually, Dominican Republic, which is about three and a half hours. Okay. But f- Vegas felt f- way longer. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. But that that was. It doesn't feel awesome. Like I just try to force myself to sleep, but I can't get comfortable. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, <clears throat> I had an ex girlfriend who paid for uh, my ticket to Rhode Island. <laughs> it was a twenty minute flight. I took ten Xanax. We for just a were, we went flight. up in the air, and uh, they were like, "All right, we're landing now." And I was like, "Oh <laughs> shit, I'm going to be wow. fucked up for the next eight hours." Yeah, <laughs> I was just crazy. like, "Hey, what's going on?" And I'm so like, happy to see you. Can I <laughs> sleep for the next? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Can I sleep the whole time I'm here? And then I'll sleep. Is that, does that actually make you sleepy? Oh, God, yeah. I hate yeah. taking it, yeah. I never does that had... bother you that you can't travel, though? Like, you might get a little bit closer. I could drive. I know, but you can't drive to Europe. Yeah, I mean, what do you... Was this okay. a therapy right. session? Yeah, it, it does bother me. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, it sucks. Yeah, it sucks. My mom one time, she's like, there's a pill. You just take a pill. And I'm like, what pill? She's like talking about this magical pill that they give people. It's like, oh, there's a pill. Xanax. No, yeah. it's kind of um, am- ambient or am- something. It makes you like a zombie. Like my mom took it and she was fucked up the whole tr- Like we were fucking with her whole time. Oh. Like as she was getting off the plane, we're like, this way, mom. She's like. <laughs> I would Jesus. take it. If it would knock me out, uh, I would take it. Yeah, I don't I don't remember what it's called, though. I'll find out for you. <laughs> heroin. <laughs> Stick <Just take> heroin. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, we'll get to that later. Wow. Um, so, uh, I, I lost my place for a second there. That threw me off. Um, so you guys just came from a show at uh, Open Night, Open Mic Night, actually local here in, in Pep's Pub. In, yeah, run by Sarah Cartwright. Uh, there was a couple people there. It was nice, fun time. Pep was there. Pep. Pep, yeah, Pep was there. Pep yeah. Was there. Did you meet Pep? Yep, Joey Pep. Did you give him like a high five? No. No? He shook his hand. He's a nice guy. Nice guy? Cool guy, yeah. Do, have, do you guys ever have someone come up like it's their first time in comedy and they just give it a shot? Does that happen often? At Mike's? Yeah. Oh, all the time. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. the place for it. Yeah. Have you ever had, had someone who's like, who blew you away? Like, man, for a first time, that was really good? No. No? Not, not blew me away, but like there's people who I'm like, oh, they're funny and they yeah. have potential, no, but nobody's yeah. ever blown me away. Scott. That kid Scott, remember? That wasn't his first time. Oh, all right. Mm, case Cheater. closed. Goddamn shit. Yeah. yeah. It was his first time at the, this one mic, and he okay. made it sound oh, like it was, was his, his first, first time. time no, no, no. But nobody's ever just like blown, no. How long have you guys been doing comedy? I've been doing it two years now. Almost four. Almost four? Yeah. But I tell people three, but now I just... You short sell yourself. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's a trick. Yeah. Like if one of the girls like, how big your dick? You're yeah. Like really small. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I say eight inches and Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, Sick. it's really small. And then yeah. you show them and it is small, but not as small as they yeah. expected. They're like, oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's a trick. I don't tell girls <laughs> the size of my penis. <laughs> it's well, not a conversation we I don't, have. I don't take pics, so I have to kind of talk it up a little bit. Uh, okay. Or talk it down, talk it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not a dick pic guy. Mm. Are you, are you, Ben's a dick pic guy, aren't you? Actually, Ben's not supposed to be there. Oh, so. okay. Uh, yeah, sorry. He's nodding yes. Yeah. Yeah, don't just pretend he's not. He's doing stuff with his hands. Yeah, he's drunk. That was weird. Um, dance over there. Or yeah. <laughs> so, uh, when, now get in the comedy thing, um, who, what are some of the guys who inspired you to do this? Um... I just always wanted to do it. There's nobody really... When I was younger, um, I feel like I've told this... Uh, Eddie Murphy uh, was my hero when I was mm-hmm. younger, and like Andy Kaufman, and like people like that. And uh, But then I got really into movies, and then I kind of forgot about comedy for years. And then, Yeah. So I started late. I can see a little bit of Andy Kaufman, will you? Oh, yeah? Yeah. No, he didn't influence me uh, it, with comment with stand-up he influenced me with like... I, I made these crazy, stupid videos when I was younger, but uh, not with comedy, really. But... um. I think you're very like so for a while like so the first couple times I seen you perform yeah I was like how much of that is him and how much of it is his on stage 
I oh, think, when I'm all nervous and stuff? Yeah. That's, that's, that's well, 100% that's, you. Yeah, that's real. That's just real. <laughs> yeah, that's well, all. 100%. Yeah, yeah, that's... I can't fake that. I remember the first time I saw Joey, I like... Uh, I remember I told somebody, I was like, there's this guy and he had this piece of paper and he seemed so nervous. It was so funny. It was like, that's kind of the Andy Kaufman thing. And then I was like, oh, that's that's really him. Yeah. That's kind of. Well, like, I but wish. at least you're being yourself. That's really cool. Absolutely. Yeah, like that's what people want to see. Well, I, well, that's the thing with yeah. Andy Kaufman. People didn't know if he was really putting it on or if that was him just being him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, people were like, he was such a fucking genius. He mm. portrayed himself to be that way. And then some people were like, no, that might have been really like. And yeah. cop, like so that's why that's why I kind of put the cor- correlation together yeah a little bit my favorite bit of his is when he's uh he starts crying I don't know if you guys saw it he starts crying and he's like <gasps> and then he starts to make it into a song like his cry <laughs> and then he like wheels over these drums and he starts playing the drums like while he's crying it's it's brilliant <laughs> <laughs> what about you who are some of the influences uh pretty early I l- watched like a lot of comedy central and then I watched a lot of like CKY videos so oh, I yeah, was yeah. like you know just random stuff that I thought was funny uh I saw George Carlin when I was pretty young and I was like oh wow this is pretty on cool. the train t- where he played the conductor right uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I just saw him uh, live. I like paid for a ticket. And my parents like went, and uh, he came out, and he was like, "You know what? No one talks about anymore. Pussy farts." And I was yeah. like, "I don't even know what this is." <laughs> like so young, was, yeah. And I was like, uh, I was like blown away. And then uh, yeah, I just uh, kept with. It. I always liked to watch Seinfeld and like things like that. And then throughout the years, um, just inspired me to you know be like, oh, I want to do stand up, and. Um, I went to therapy once and the lady was like write down two goals two things that you think are crazy that you want to do and I wanted to uh, try to like ride a train and uh, you know, there's like uh, he's praying over there vomiting um, and uh, holding in a vomit you never see like people like ride the train or whatever yeah, and I was like I want to do that or stand up and she's like hey, you should try stand up so I uh, tried stand up so your therapist kind of pushed you that way yeah, yeah it was really nice good for her, her. Yeah. yeah and now she's dead uh, no I'm just kidding uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I've always been a huge fan like of com like of comedy. So like I said, like most of my middle school and high school, I would stay in on Friday nights because I'd be really excited for the Comedy Central presents, yeah. and it would just be special special after special after special. I've seen Kevin Hart before he was huge, like if you like anyone who's big right now. I remember watching before they, were, and I'm not trying to be like that guy. Like I knew them before they were big. Like yeah. I liked that band before they yeah. were cool. But I really did. Like yeah. I like Dane Cook before he exploded. I seen his 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 special on Comedy Central on Friday night. Mitch Hedberg. Yeah, yeah. It was like a half hour, right? He, half Mitch, hour. Mitch, Mitch Hedberg had two of them. Yep. And the first one was actually so heavily edited that they had to reshow the second one because when he first came out and did his first special. They didn't realize that his genius, mm. and they edited it tremendously, and it was actually super, super short. Yeah. And then after they realized what Mitchell Hedberg was about, they went back and re-aired his first special unedited because oh, you I actually seen that. the progression of him getting the crowd and yeah. doing it, what he did. Mm-hmm. Like, because people were just like they were so confused by it. Yeah. They're like, is is this guy? Like, they thought he was yeah. bombing. That's why they edited. It. They thought yeah. he bombed, and he's like, that was the the specialness of yeah. Mitch Hedberg, where he was like. I mean, he probably was bombing, yeah. but but he was also kind of lowering them in a little bit. He was kind of mm-hmm. filling it out and seeing what he can do. Yeah, yeah. So I just, I just remember watching all that, and I was just like, "This is fucking great." Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, there was so many like good like, like I said like I used to watch Greg Giraldo. I was a huge fan of Greg Giraldo yeah. and like Patrice O'Neill, yeah. the one where he was like the special where like there was a subway train behind him. Who's that, Patrice? Patrice, that one know. was really good. Like I just, and then I used to watch like the Deaf Comedy jams. Yeah, like with, with Bernie Mac and shit before yeah. he was huge. Like I ain't scared of you, motherfucker. <laughs> I ain't scared. Of you. Like yeah. Martin Lawrence hosting. Like yeah. I was always a fan of stand up, but I would just never have the boss to do, do that it. again. <laughs> that impression. I ain't of Bernie scared Mac. of you, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> it was the whitest Bernie Mac impression of all time. Uh, he wanted me to do it again in that voice. That's why. <laughs> Even the other one was kind of was, was very white. Do yours. Do What's Steve you? Harvey. <laughs> I don't think I know. You do, uh, ladies. That's all I know. He does, ladies. Let- <laughs> You're right. What is going on? I'm having a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I never was a huge Steve Con. He's uh, just Steve staring. He's <laughs> freaking me out. All right, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel him like staring at my head. He's coughing over here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're it's never... like you're on a plane. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. <I'm> <laughs> um, see, that's a callback. Yeah. That nailed it. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I sure it's recording, man. I can't see. Oh, there's a red light there. <laughs> this is a bit. He's yeah. he's like in the. Uh, I swear. Yeah, in the car on the way here, he's like, I'm gonna cough in the middle of do it. You need like a, you need you need anything? No, I'm good. I'm good. Right. I'm doing a bit. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I completely fucked up again. Um, we're not gonna talk about that. Um, I'm, I'm doing I'm doing you. I'm just like fucking yeah. freaking out here a little bit. Um, <laughs> what? So you guys, you kind of have like a little comedy family. You're a little part of like you kind of have like a little stable of people that you work with, travel with. Yeah. How my how, friends? <laughs> yeah. How important is do you think that is in in, in your growth and and working together? Like, not so much just kind of go solo at it because a, a lot of comics probably try to go that route where they really don't have a support system or they just kind of jump in and find a mic where you kind of have an advantage where you kind of have like a stable of people that you. Yeah, that's the one thing I didn't expect when I did comedy is like all the people who I'd become friends with and stuff yeah. and just like the car rides. The car rides sometimes are funnier than any of the mics or yeah. shows that we ever put on. It's just yeah. like they busting balls with each other and all that. It's just so fun. Yeah, I, I, that's one thing that I really, really admire about the, the, your crew is there's like you have a, a group of you that <laughs> that really push each other and kind of and motivate each other to do better. You're like a little family, and I think yeah. that's super important. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. I mean, there's none of them are left, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, like... Well, most of them quit, or they're not around anymore. Matt's playing poker. This. Yeah, Matt's playing poker. John's normal again. John, yeah. I hope he comes back. I hope so, too. John, if you're listening... Yeah, man, please. I, you're fucking good. Yeah. You're really good at what you do, Yeah, and you should definitely come back. Yep. He, two of my favorite local comedy memories are John. Yeah. We kind of talked about it off camera. When I culture to culture, and he did his, his dad joke. Yeah. And just lured everyone in, and they were all, like, crying, and then he just fucking nailed him with it. And then the second one <laughs> was when we, you guys were at Coney, and he has a joke where he uses a certain word. What? The it's it's the it starts with an N. He uses naive. It? Yeah. He, oh, okay. Oh, okay. I know yeah, what you're yeah. talking about. All right, all right. And there was one. I'm trying to remember. His there was bit. one black gentleman. Yeah. One and only he black he, gentleman in the crowd. Yeah, he doesn't use a hard R at the end of it. He doesn't. In case anybody's listening, but he, yeah, he does not use a hard R. Yeah. But the ones that knew it was coming. Yeah. Were like this. They didn't even look at him. They were just like, "How is this guy going to react to oh, this no. joke?" I don't think I was there that night. Yeah, and then he did the joke, and yeah. then and then everyone who didn't know it was coming after they heard it, they were like, "How does he feel about this?" <laughs> and he knew it was happening, and he played into it. Yeah, he's like, "It's cool, I'm dating her." Like, yeah. I'm allowed to say it. <laughs> it was yeah. fu- it was really funny. Yeah. I think the guy finished his food and left, but it was know. very entertaining. <laughs> he was eating. Yeah, he was eating wow. food. Yeah, and then uh, and then that was the night that Matt's dad first came. You were definitely there. Oh. Okay. Okay. And Matt's dad was there, and then he was just kind of he got his first clear diagnosis of what he was going through, mm. and then Matt went up and did his whole thing like, "Oh my God, my dad." Yeah, and then John, you or John came up and they're like, "Cool, I'm going to follow Matt telling his most sad, depressing <laughs> yeah. story of all time." About his, you know, what's great about that, Mike, is uh, <laughs> Matt got all the comics f- unlimited free food and drinks. So, so whenever we were there, we were just we'd order trays of food. Just like chicken wings, anything we want, fries, and just keep it coming, keep it coming. Like yep. we just, it was, yeah, it was awesome. And then everyone got mad because they turned the baseball game off. Do you remember that? Oh yeah, yeah. That and was. Then, and then the first person up was just like, "Man, I just checked my phone, and uh, that baseball game was a real good game." And it was like, <laughs> <laughs> they just fucking laughed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was great. It was perfect. It was it was awesome. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's really hard because it's a lot of places in this area. They try to do the comedy night. Like we, tr- they tried in Monty City. They tried in Pottsville. But it's just like if this area is even hard enough to get any entertainment going. Like bands, it's hard to get people to go to see a band. Yeah. Let alone stand up comic. So it, it's 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 a challenge. It's anywhere really but yeah i'm sure around here it's yeah. harder like well we don't have a comedy club like some yeah. bigger cities have a club where you can go that people pay admission knowing they're going to see a comedy club like some people go to a bar for the night because mm-hmm. they want to drink and fucking be sad and they're like oh great i have fucking a band or a comedy act that i have to pay yeah. a cover to get into yeah it's the worst when it's a restaurant and they don't expect you coming they're just <laughs> yeah. like out with their family eating and like you got to get on stage and be like hey guys uh so uh, you want to hear some my dick <laughs> yeah you want to hear some dick jokes yeah <laughs> Yeah. What is the worst c- scenario that you guys ever done comedy in? Something like that. Like a restaurant? Yeah. Have you ever, you have any stories about it? Like where someone just kind of like um, well, got super upset they said the something? The one we just did was not ideal. That was good. It was okay. But I, pe- I think Peps is kind no of building one was, it up. That- no, not that one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Not the one we just did. The, the one we did the other week. 
the benefit. One. Oh yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. I thought it was good. Yeah, you know I mean, <laughs> no, it was good. It was good. It just the, the crowd was like, yeah, nobody yeah. gave a shit that we were there. That's what comedy. I mean. Yeah, right? nobody gave a like, fuck. No, the, yeah, <laughs> God bless the person that we did the benefit for. I'm just saying that the crowd was not. I don't think that they thought there was going to be stand up. No, nobody thought there was going to be stand up. It was like a beef and beer. Yeah, where people were standing around to like a hot buffet, yeah. and then Joey went up. He's like, ah, my girlfriend. You yeah. know, like, yeah. One of the worst ones ever is uh, there was a this club in a uh, this bar in Bethlehem. It was called the Fun House, and uh, they would have amazing bands. Like these bands would be incredible, like talented musicians, like playing pe- to a drunk audience that was dancing, and like and it was an open mic. And then um, there'd be comedians in between, yeah. and they'd stop the music. People would be on the dance floor. They'd stop oh. the music, and they'd be like, "All right, next up we have Joey Tepadino. He's gonna do some comedy." And I'd go up there, and they'd all just be standing there, like, "What?" Like what is going like wasted out of their minds? Made I'd be that like, mistake. I'd be like, how? And it's like one in the morning, and I don't know, you know. <laughs> so they were always just like, get the fuck out of here, get this clown off the stage, you know. Damn, just, get yeah. this clown. Really? Yeah, it was rough. Wow, it was yeah, rough. I yeah, I made that mistake at Skook Sock. I didn't realize how. I try to do like local comedy and music, and mm. when people come to see a band and they start getting like, it's hard enough to get people into the band, and then people start getting into the band and they got really drunk, and then towards the end, like I think the beginning of the day, people were into it. Yeah, like the first, like I think the lineup that was there, like they hit really hard early, and then he went up, and then you went up, and then Joey went up, and Sarah in between was doing comedy, and then just by the end of the night, people were just like, "Fuck this!" Like yeah. they were just oh, drunk. Boy. Yeah, yeah. Poor Matt. But I don't think they realized that there would be no music anyways, right? Because you're setting up for the next band. Yeah. So it would have just been silence. Exactly. And yeah, so I was so trying I mean, to make that silence yeah. more entertaining. But I don't think they realized that. Yeah. They're like, oh, we got to wait because there's a comic. Or what? But Like, oh, this fucking comic's ruining more music. I'm like, <laughs> no, they have to change the drum yeah, set out. Like, yeah. I, mean, I, I thought it was a good time. I had a blast. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. The com- Like I said, I thought, I thought a lot of the comics were very, like, that's a, you're, you guys have a good comic team. Yeah. Um, and then I also seen your comic team a little bit when you guys did the cut show freak throw. The cut sh- cutthroat freak show? <laughs> yeah. I couldn't say that right. Um, who's the one dude that performed there that night? He, he was, like, only there that one time. Eric? Drexler? Bald? No. No, he's... Is he like I don't want to be like rude Is he like Indian Like a, like a darker skin guy Russell Russell, Russell Austin yeah oh, Fucking boy. hilarious Yeah Yeah he killed it He did a dick a dick pic joke That was fucking amazing Yeah He ran around the room And was like Nobody wants to see dick pics Cause your dick's ugly Yeah You're, And he just like For three yep. minutes Like he's fucking He's he's open for like Bigger comics too right Yeah <laughs> Yep Yeah the, If I uh, The cutthroat uh, freak show The first one In the, the fire hall play Or yeah. what was it uh, The ambience Yeah That yeah. was one of the best shows i've that was one of the most fun shows i've ever done yo that night <laughs> that was that was I, insane i didn't expect any of it i stapled a 20 dollar bill to a girl's tit and the other half to a guy's nutsack yeah it was insane it was fucking the, awesome this was consensual yes <laughs> okay and then they they he put so, he put hooks in his eyes and then he hooked them up to oh a chair. so it's an actual freak show yeah, yeah. insane oh, okay. and they're insane. so good yeah like At being freaks so th- this dude <laughs> this dude gets a pen and he shoved it up his nose and then he's like he found the drunkest guy in the crowd which was me that night mm. and he's like i want you to come up and pull this out of my nose and i'm like fuck it's no problem like yeah. right? and then he was i guess he tried to outgross me and i was like i'm drunk dude i'll do whatever like so he's like pull it out and he's like and i went to go pull it he goes with your teeth and i went and I bit it and he was like oh shit this is happening and he's just like don't move and he pulled it out like he pulled it out and I just held on out my teeth uh, and then he, I held this booger pen uh, with my fingers and then he's like you sick fuck right and everyone's kind of like laughing and I was like I I think I, I don't know if I pretend to lick it or if I actually licked it and then I went to give it back to him he goes, I don't want that you sicko oh, wow. and then he turned around and he had AIDS with an arrow pointing down to his butt tattooed on his lower back. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, wow, I was like, yeah. I have A's now. He's that a, was a tattoo? Yeah. Yeah, he's a wild... This guy's insane. Yeah, but in a good way. He's yeah. like a super entertaining and fun. And he put a, he put firecrackers in a bucket, and then he pulled down his pants. His dick was out, <laughs> and he put the bucket over his dick and lit them on fire. Like chinkies. Yeah. Well, that's probably not the right... <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> what are you ah, saying? Well, that's what right. they're called, right? I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> oh, boy. That's what <laughs> It's one of those things where, like, we called them that when we were kids. Oh, okay. Control, alt, delete. <laughs> right. wow. Well, they're, they're little packs of, like firecrackers mm. probably the better word to yeah say. i have no affiliation with what you're talking about <laughs> at all firecrackers yeah, yeah. Well, we'll just fucking hit this button yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, are you serious yeah. is that a real thing <laughs> yeah, a little shock jack oh, all right yeah. um 
but yeah the he <laughs> yeah. put a he put firecrackers into a bucket and he lit it on fire and it was, Beer happens, it was wild yeah and then scarlet is like a clown girl okay who also does like adult entertainment mm-hmm. so she went up and she fucking like has this giant like rebar pole panties and she hits it with like a sawzall and it shoots sparks everywhere. Oh yeah, that was and wild. She fucking comes came, out to the Slayer's uh raining, raining blood. blood. Yeah. So she came up to me and she started like hitting me in the face with these sparks. And I'm just like as a wrestling fan, I start going, Goldberg. Oh, wow. Gold. <laughs> yeah. Mm. It hurt like fucking hell. It didn't feel great at yeah. all. I thought the whole place was gonna light a fire. Cause she's like hitting the ceiling with it and stuff. Yeah, I got a lot of good pictures of it. She's a clown who does adult entertainment. Yeah, okay. You can find her. On, she's pretty cool. Yeah, she's a really cool person. The like whole the whole crew is. Uh, who was so the dude that fun. did music? Um, Emotron. Yeah, he was. I love that guy. He was. He's like Andy Kaufman. Yeah, his whole shtick is like when he's on stage, he's doing a character, and then his shtick, and then um. When he's off stage, he's completely normal. Like yeah, a totally normal. Cool he's guy. funny to watch. You follow him on Instagram. Yeah, he's, where he pisses in jars. Yeah, he's like, "This is my piss jar." Yeah, I, I still like follow him. He's fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's, his skin is like because he what he does is he has this thing where he wears this big wig and a suit, and then he'll take like green food coloring dye and squirt it all over himself, and he just like turns green, and then yeah, like after the show, he's like his skin's dyed. Yeah, but he ta- <laughs> then then he takes off all his clothes and then he lights his dick on fire. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Everything's about fucking up your dick. Yeah, lights his dick on fire. Well, I'm I remember I asked the cut, cutthroat freak show, freak show. I can't say his name. Um, cut if, if it was real, I was like, "Is there a trick to holding the bucket with the, the firecrackers?" And he's like, "What do you think?" And he ripped out his he whipped out his dick and like showed me all the there was like markings and burns all over. Yeah, so that was wild. And then he it, made me suck it, and I did. <laughs> came, his oh cum my. came out of all little holes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that was that was a great night. And then we played ring toss on Scarlet's tits. Yeah, and the dildo. And actually, it was a dildo, but yeah. Steve Fulton hooked, but he landed on both of her boobs. He mm. was supposed to try to get on the dildo, and he, he was drunk, too, and he landed on the boobs. Hmm. Yeah, it was funny. It was a great yeah. night. It was a good night of entertainment. I, if you ever get a chance to see the cut show, the cutthroat freak show, yeah. definitely do it. Mm-hmm. Definitely do it. <laughs> yep. So <I> was, <laughs> yep. Better, yep. you're right? I'm all right. All right. All right. All right. He's just a little drunk. So, uh, Jared, what was your worst show ever? Uh, or worst experience doing comedy? I, did you you really said that someone got booed off the stage? Like booed? Yeah. Wow, that's so crazy. I've never seen. I saw that when I was a kid. When I saw a, a band, I saw like a guy get booed off the stage. Johnny Lang. He opened for Aerosmith. Oh, okay. And he got booed off the stage. I watched a band get booed off stage. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I I, 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 I watched oh. a band and I watched a comic. Okay. Yeah. I've never yeah. seen a comic get booed off. The stage. I've seen him get the light early, but that's about what's it. your worst? Um, the worst I've ever done, or the you worst show? The worst show I've ever done. The worst show you personally have ever experienced. The worst thing. Like, like you stand up for this bad few... audience, like a bad audience, basically, like they're not feeling it or something like that. Yeah. Um, uh, man, I don't know. That one the other week was like it was kind of rough. There, like yeah. those people were not feeling it at all. But they're just, just not paying attention. It has nothing to yeah. do with you or your lack I just of talent. Or... Had I was just out of it. I just told a DJ to queue up only lonely, and I just crawled under the pool table. And oh, that was it. funny. Instead, yeah. <laughs> instead of just doing material, I was like, this is just like yeah, no one cares. But uh, yeah, I've seen some bad. I've seen some shows where I'm just like. Like, this yeah. is just bad. Like, no one is paying attention. And then, like, the comic is just, like... when a com- I think it's the worst when a comic blames the audience. Like, yeah. when they're up there and they can't get through it and they're just like, well, you guys fucking suck. Like, you so this yeah. is funny. It's like, it's obviously not working right now. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, and then just give into it, kind of. That's what I think. Like, I, go ahead. No, I was just thinking of the, one of the worst shows I've ever had that turned into the a really good story. Is uh, it was I forget the name of the bar. It was in Scranton, and uh, the Viking. There was Tom the Viking. I don't know if you guys know who that is. He's a he's a Viking comedian. He had a, he put on a show, and I was there with John, and uh, me, and a bunch of other comics. And um, at least the Viking can fight if shit gets real. Yeah, but <laughs> but uh, John got in a fight. He he, uh, he said something like, "I hope you're some." The audience was so combative; they're going back and forth, they're screaming, nobody's paying attention. John, I don't want to say out of context what he said, but it was something of something like, "I hope your son goes to Iraq and dies" or something like that to this oh, one guy. My and the God. guy's like, "What the fuck?" So it started this whole fight, and like everybody got out of their seats, and it was like almost like a rumble, like in the middle of the thing. Somebody actually has it on video; it's hilarious. <laughs> so the next guy goes up after everybody gets settled down whatever he does good uh, or no no he doesn't do good and then i go up and i'm like what am i gonna do so i sang the i hate talking about myself but i said i 
I sang the Star Spangled Banner, <laughs> and everybody got dead quiet. It was all these old veterans, and they all stood up and they started saluting. And then, like by the end of it, they're all singing along with the Star Spangled Banner. They're like, "Hello, you know." They're all like, and then um, they listened to a little bit of my set and then started talking again. But yeah, that was a wild. It, that was a wild night. And then the Viking went up, and he. I remember um, you guys did this one show. And this girl I work with now, she was heckling. Like, she was just, oh, no. she wanted to talk as much as you guys did. Yeah. And I guess she was trying to just say shock value stuff to be funny. And I know who you're talking about. And, yeah. And she uh, she told Matt, she goes, I have 13 kids. And he goes, yeah, it looks like it. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it, it, it took her off guard. But that's that's like a, I'd actually like a kind of a lead into my next question. Like, when you deal with hecklers or people who talk, like, it's weird. Like it's a, there's an art to handling that because if you let them feel like because you watch it on the internet all the time. Like how did this comic deal with like that's one of the probably most searched things right now on YouTube is comic versus heckler. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and certain comics if if they if the heckler thinks that they're getting more laughs because they're being part of the show, mm-hmm. they don't stop. Yeah, so it's like a battle. It really is. It's 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 a battle of wit and like how do I control this very inebriated drunk person? It's hard. And yeah, it's hard, and a lot of it for me is at this point I'm not that good. So a lot of it is luck at yeah. this point. Yeah, I'm not that good with. Uh, or you have like a rumble in the crowd. What do you mean? Like how you're saying like if you make the wrong joke, it could. Turn oh it. yeah, yeah. Like I get mad, and I'm like, shut the fuck. I used to say just say shut the fuck up. Like shut the fuck yeah, up, you know. And then, that, yeah. yeah, that doesn't really people well, the, don't like well, that. Pro- so you got to be like. Well, the problem is, is like a lot of places you guys are probably performing right now are not comedy clubs yeah. mm-hmm. where if you talk they don't handle that like they, like security is there to be like yo shut the fuck up or get out yeah where you guys are performing in like places that are not prepared for that so if people talk to just like they're they're paying for food. or they're ordering a drink yeah yeah, yeah. Like, so it's, it's kind of hard so yeah you gotta they're like paying learn for food to, and beer so yeah uh, we're not kicking them out yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I've, been, I've done places like that where it's yeah they, they're not gonna kick people out but the club that uh joey hosts at um the Lizard Lounge, uh, the Chameleon Club. Uh, there was a show there. I opened for this guy, and um, he was just like a random comic, kind of like a road dude. And I don't know if they just gave away free tickets or something, but like these people showed up and they were talking from the moment they got in and then sat down and were talking. And I, I, no one could like I was hosting and like no one could reason with them during their set. And then I just remember he was wearing a fedora, and I was like, "Sir, you are fedorable." And that's all. That's all I said. And then he was just like, "Ha and started laughing. And then I was like, "Wait, why am I actually like giving into this dude?" Like, and I went up to security, and he was just like. Oh, should we take him out? And I'm like, yeah, like you know what the I mean. Community so, club, yeah. So they took him out. They don't fuck around at the community club. Yeah, so which was great. And um, but like, I've been at Helium once, and I remember a dude literally put up his phone, and it was like hooked the arm, and they were out. Yeah, like Helium doesn't fuck around either. Chameleon like, really doesn't either. Yeah, I was just there for a crowbot show. And if you moshed or bumped into two people in your mosh, like if you jumped around and bumped into three people and they weren't into it, and the person pushed you back, and if you didn't like, if you got angry because you bumped into them, security was like already there, and they're yeah. like, oh, "Wow, you're gonna come down, or we're gonna take you out of here." Like, yeah. it was security. Cool. And, shout yeah. out to Bish. Yeah, yeah, shout out Mike Bish. Yeah, yeah. Community club's a cool place, man. I like it. Yeah, it's, it's one of my You guys favorite. do a lot of comedy there? Oh, yeah. Every now, Monday. is it like standing room or like do people sit? And, sitting. Is it sitting? Yeah. You can stand in the back. There's a like a downstairs part. It's a lizard lounge. That's I, where I, that is. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've never been to the downstairs. That's why people yeah. get confused. Upstairs is chameleon club. Downstairs, lizard it's lounge. lizard lounge. Yeah. So that would be, that sucks because it's hard to get out. Like, that's a far drive for me for a Monday yeah. night. Mm-hmm. I would definitely come out and support that. But it's just, it's, it's, I wish we had more shit like that in our area. Yeah. It's January 27th. What? Oh, Joe DeRosa. Yeah, there's a... Do you know Joe DeRosa? Mm-hmm. Oh, he's like a legit road cop. Like he... What does he write for? He's uh, written for a bunch of different stuff. He's had specials and it's on He's going to be in the Lizard yeah. on the Comedian Club. The same Lizard thing. Yeah, yeah, Lizard Lizard same, yeah, yeah. But he's going to be there and uh, we're opening for him. So it's going awesome. be pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. January 27th. Yeah. 27th. I have to check. This, this for January, I literally have like... I only have like two days off this whole month. You, well, no, can't, anybody you can't lie on here, though. You I swear to God, you're gonna go and then. No, I guess it's like, I have to see what I'm doing yeah. first because like, I have so much stuff planned. We, I literally, go ahead. we just put on an awesome show there. Before I forget, it, uh, it was called Craigslist Comedy, where we found people on Craigslist that yeah. had, don't know about comedy or weren't supposed to know about comedy. They just regular people off Craigslist, and they were judges. So then we'd have comics go up 
and do five minutes and then they judge and they were judged, judged by craigslist by craigslist people yeah, afterwards just, yeah That's fucking and it was hilarious. a rowdy yeah. hilarious fun like who it was won really there was no uh yeah we didn't crown a winner yeah we just like uh, yeah you're we, judges no, well, no, no, so, they were just yeah. being critiqued right after their set. Like, oh. they get, like, made fun of. So they like, did, yeah, so I basically made it up that I was like, oh, I go to these open mics to see bad open micers, and then I was like, eh, that doesn't really work. Let's do it with, like, good comedians and then just some random people, like, not random people, some people who are starting and trying and things like that. Yeah. So we did that, and it worked really good. So they did five or six minutes, and then for, like, three or four minutes, we talked about your set afterwards. And yeah. And these were random people who didn't care about comedy, so they were, like, brutally honest. Like, yeah. The first guy went up, and I remember the guy, I was like, oh, man, this is going to be rough, the first one. And the guy was like, it was a good set, but um, you were a little disjointed. And I was like, <laughs> wow, all right, that was a good critique, all right. And then the one comic afterwards, shout out Kyle Shahan, he was like, do you really think I'm disjointed? And I was like, that was a good kind of burn, you know what yeah. I mean? Got, so, yeah. Now, kind of with a lo- I, I, I can't really relate, because I don't see as much local comic, but I, I see a lot of local bands. And I know there is bands I go out and see... And maybe they don't have the best night, but I, and then like they'll come up to me afterwards like, "Yo, what do you think of our set?" And I'll be honest, I'm like, "Man, it was good." Because obviously, I can't do what you do, so if I will never say you are fucking terrible, because at least you had the balls to get up there and fucking do it, mm-hmm. so that you already a 100 percent get like a C plus in my book because you fucking had the guts to go do that shit. Mm-hmm. Whether it be in a band, whether it be fucking try to film something, whether it be try to upload something to YouTube, you put yourself out there. Mm-hmm. Awesome. You fucking, you got past that point. So I'm not going to fucking shit on you and say you're the worst human being ever because it takes courage to even get to that point. I so agree. when it comes to like doing co- like music, they'll be like, what'd you think of our set? I'm like, listen, man, you can definitely tell you're not as polished or seasoned as some other bands. Mm-hmm. But the fact that you're up there trying and you realize that, like, keep working, like you're going to be fine. Yeah. Like a lot of people expect because we live in a society where you watch like Lost Comic Standing or fucking American Idol, where people have to be fucking amazing right away. Yeah. And it's funny to make fun of someone when they suck. Yeah. That kind of sucks because yeah. they're like... I'll use like a popular guy now probably not the best idea because he got in some trouble but Louis C.K. when he first started was fucking t- it was not the greatest Yeah, but he worked and worked and worked and most, worked most and comics. found his flow yeah most yeah. comics like you, you gotta go up and kind of fucking even musicians you gotta go up and suck a couple times you have to go up and bomb you have to go up and get f- and go through shit and you just keep working at it and you fucking develop that skill like and it's good that you guys are developing those places in Schuylkill County in Lancaster where you you're giving these people the opportunity to at least try yeah and then mm-hmm. when they come off you guys as comics be like hey we're in the same point as you but maybe a couple of years in it's okay to suck like you had a bad night mm-hmm. fucking brush it off work on what you got to work on and come back like mm-hmm. and i think that's very important to have your stable of people around you that you guys do like i, I truly do i think that's a good thing to have mm-hmm. because a lot of people probably go into this and they're completely alone yeah yeah do, no, you guys, do you guys bring people in more often? Like when people come up and they try an open mic, you're like, hey, like you should come with us more and do more. Like I think you have something here. Oh, that- yeah, yeah. People ask where mics are and stuff. I'll, yeah. I'll tell, yeah. Yeah, that, that's good. And that's good that you're supporting each other. Cause yeah, I, think- I tell them to come back. When I host the mic and people are like, eh, I'll, I'll run up to them. They'll think, like some people I'll look and I'll, I'll see them walking out with their head down. I'm like, ah, I'll run up to them and be like, oh man, you got to come back. You know, you're funny, that one joke, you know. I'll try to make them come back because you want to build a community. You want yeah, people 100%. to... 100%. You know what I mean? Like you don't want to be like, oh, that guy sucks. It's just the same four comics or eight comics every week. Exactly. Like what's the point of that? Like, yeah. You want to keep people coming back. Same so. thing. Uh, honestly, just like from a podcast standpoint, I'm the same way. Like people are like, oh, like do you ever listen? I'm like, if, if someone is listening, local to me or is doing the same thing I'm doing yeah. I'll listen to it and I'll be like hey I'm not a fucking professional like I'm not making money on this I'm not fucking Joe Rogan level but hey like I listen to your shit and here's step A B and C that I would do now because mm-hmm. I fucked up in the beginning like don't buy this shit don't do this don't do that because it didn't work for me just giving you pointers like yeah. and I think that's very important to support one another to do that mm-hmm. Where, whatever your craft is yeah. if you're really good at one thing if you're a musician a comedian a podcaster anything just fucking support one another yeah. it helps because if if they get good at it and they're like yo we got to this level and built up a thing and the reason we did it and hopefully they're good enough people to return the favor like yo this person helped me then yeah. you work with each other you know what I mean we mm-hmm. bounce ideas off each other but you know, obviously you'll have that one person who maybe gets a little more clout than you do at one point in time where they think they're bigger than you and then they're like they forget where they came from that all always happens but but as long as you put that all that you extend that hand first yeah it it it, it that's what you're supposed to do yeah. yeah yeah that's a good idea yeah yeah uh, i think that's what 
anytime there's new people at or where we're at uh, mics whatever i'm always like supportive of it and i think it's you know it, it's it's crazy to think like even at this point when you see new people yeah like i'm like this person's trying this yeah you know like this is crazy like i don't know because i remember the first time i went and i was like told people that i was doing it and so that's the worst idea ever yeah the first time you do comedy don't tell people you're doing comedy like just do it wait three years and then be like hey here's what i'm doing you know what i mean like that i don't know yeah, don't same. wait three years, but I'm just saying, like, I see people come on, like, dates and stuff, and I'm like, all right, let's see how this goes. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I don't know. They invite their entire family out for their first time at Mike. That's awesome because then you get an audience, too, because yeah. you're like... It's you awesome know. for us. Yeah. That just happened on uh, Thursday. There was a mic, and um, there was a guy, real nice guy, pretty funny, second time he ever went up, and he brought 20 people. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's a good night. It was a good night for uh, him. for him. Yeah, they heckled everybody else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really good night for him. Yeah. Oh no, no, it was all right. I, yeah, I, I, I when I even when I started this, I was like, hey, I kind of let people know I do it, but I was like, but what I did, I just booked like fucking fifteen interviews, and I just fucking went through my process. I, I'm still not a fucking amazing interviewer. I wouldn't consider myself an interviewer. I just I, I can if I can change the name to interviews with everyday people, I would just have a conversation because I think this is more of a conversation thing than an interview. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it just like just hanging out and just learning about each other. You know. Mm-hmm. Um. So um. Where where does used to meet up? The lizard lounge. The lizard lounge. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's like I said. That's a fucking cool ass town, man. I like. I like that area. There's a lot of cool breweries in the area, like businesses, like mm-hmm. places you can go and do shit. Like, yeah, nobody expects that before they go there. Lancaster, they think of uh, like Amish, Amish people, and it's not like that at all. It's no. like a, it's, it's like a, a small Philly almost. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. There's lots a lot of, of cool art, shit out there. Lots of art and uh, comedy, music, what restaurants. Are, what are your summer place? Some are, some of your favorite places to go on Lancaster. The lizard. I. <laughs> All I do is comedy, so I don't. It's you don't just go like, like I go to work and then I, I rarely go. I don't drink and drive anymore. The horse as in. stupid as that sounds, I don't go yeah. out. No, that's very smart. That's yeah, not stupid. I know it sounds. Yeah, the horse inn is really good. If yeah. you like food, you like beer and things like that. The horse inn is really good. Everything there, every place I've ever went. Is Spring, delicious. you ever go to Spring House? Yeah, it's really good. Like too. right, like yeah. a, like the Lizard Brewery. Lounge corner down like yeah. two block, two or three blocks. They're fucking awesome beers. Yeah. Um, what do you guys do for your normal like nine to fives? Because a lot of people see like obviously if you put a lot of stuff on social media like I'm doing comedy like like people think like people still think I do this for a living and one hundred percent don't yeah. I have a forty hour a forty hour week job like yeah I just I work in like a, a shipping department of a warehouse you and you use that sometimes in your in your comedy which yeah. is funny yeah where you're like we just say like Jim from shipping thinks this. Yeah, yeah, but that, that's funny. You know what's funny is that's from another job. So it's like, and Jim doesn't exist. It's like most jokes are just like a bunch of shit put together. It's Absolutely. like a bunch of like you're pulling from everywhere, but you got to make it in one line. You yeah. know what I mean? Like you got to take your whole life. You got to take like mm-hmm. five years and put it in three sentences. <laughs> it's so crazy. Uh, working in factories, you, I listen. If I was smart enough to be a comic, I would have fucking amazing shit because I've seen some fucked up shit. And like yeah. I've been in factories my whole life for the most part. You know, yeah. and now I'm a tell. I'm well. I'm kind of a telemarketer. Yeah, I'm not, they don't like when you say that, but yeah. I work. I call people and recruit them to mm-hmm. to come to school. I feel like a telemarketer, but it, yeah. I'm not cold What's calling school? people. Uh, at Empire. So if you want to go to cosmetology, oh, okay. I love my job. It's fun. Like, but I'm not cold calling people. Like, yeah. I'm not uh, harassing people. Like, people request the information. Oh, okay. But I'm on the phone trying to recruit people. But yeah. I mean, you you can make fucking a whole TV show out of that. Like, just fucking. You know what yeah. I mean, like, there's every day you wake, you have interesting conversations or meet interesting people. But like yeah. how you're saying, like the shipping department. Like, yeah, I worked in the shipping department for a factory, and it was it was entertaining like mm. the shit that happens like it's crazy yeah yeah. Well, I feel uh, like they're listening now it's one line if you guys are listening it's one line and it's not anything bad it's not what he's doing is he's secretly yeah. watching you guys he's like how can I make you in my no. material no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what, what about you what do you do uh, I don't talk about my work in uh, that but I work with people with intellectual disabilities and developmental okay. disabilities yeah. yeah I bet you there's a lot of funny stuff that happens <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah it's funny because I, I think you found that out one time and you were asking me about the R word you're like, oh, I know you don't like ridiculous. That word. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, I mean, say whatever you want to say. I don't yeah. care. Like, I don't really. I'm not judge a fan people of that way. I'm really not a fan of it to myself. But here's yeah. the thing: I grew up as a white dude in School County, so literally, there's two words I've used my entire life, and it's the R word and the F word, which yeah. is like 
one's putting down people with mental disabilities and one's putting down people that are part of an LGBTQ community. <laughs> I never grew up fucking realizing that when I use that word, how fucking terrible it is and how mm. you're making like something lesser than what it is by using that word. So I'm trying, I try my best to not use it, yeah. but it, I, when I do say it, I'm like, dude, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to do that. You know what I mean? Like, I get it. Yeah. yeah. And I and I and, and what the problem is we live in a society too. If you say it one time, you're like, cancel, uh, cancel, shut them down. Did you just do the Nazi? Salute? I did. I just wow. that was supposed to be like oh, that was right. supposed to be a straight uh, okay. line. <laughs> That's two strike two. Yeah, um, yeah. What's that button? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so uh, well, you and obviously you had to go to school for that and stuff. So uh, yeah, and and in the, my field, uh, no, I went to like community college and stuff. But uh, no, I um. No, I just kind of like fell into it through this way and then like mm-hmm. it worked way up and things like that. My so. The biggest thing for me when it came to something like that with learning about people with disabilities is like I, I used to go to like there's a place that they do something really close and they do like a day for like people with autism. Mm-hmm. And at first I was like, oh, okay. And then you don't realize like what those people actually go through. Yeah. And it's just like, man, it's fucking crazy. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting thing. And then I seen a, they did like a play with uh, like and her, and, and her or no. Bloomsburg and it was the play like the theme of the play was about somebody with autism okay but the way they did it is they had like a lot of special effects and noises and sounds and you're watching it you're like you're like you're watching you're like what the fuck like they hit you with like 15 different sounds visuals and stuff and you're mm-hmm. like this is so confusing and like you fucks with your head for a second you're like what you experience isn't even a quarter of what someone that actually has yeah. autism goes through and you're like they hear sounds like yeah like we're like they where they have like an over stim where all their simulations yeah. go off at one time and like they can't focus on oh, one thing okay, because they, they're getting distracted by every that's kind of like what nuance. flying that's what flying on a plane would be like yeah that's well, what it's like when my anxiety of the panic like the panic attack that's what it's like it's mm-hmm. like heightened it's like you hear every little sound clear have you ever tried now i i don't have anxiety to that e- extreme my anxiety mostly stems from other things but i do go through a, a form of that but have you ever tried like cbd or anything like that no no mm, i don't i just no you should give it a shot it's really it's helpful yeah yeah is definitely does it, it get you high no oh, okay. not at all so I, I can't smoke weed no it, it's it's literally thc free yeah but it's super helpful yeah yeah I, with depression and anxiety and stuff what do you do with it snort it no <laughs> yeah you smoke it no put it in your eyes i i <laughs> take it you can take it in like a cap like a like a liquid dropper where you drop it behind your tongue it tastes uh, okay. horrible yeah and then you just like you kind of sit it there for a couple seconds and let it go in uh, or you can take a pill uh, i take okay. a pill every morning like a cbd every pill morning? holy yeah. shit wow not every. I mean, like I take it every morning because I have joint pain as well. <laughs> one pill. You took ten Xanax. Like wow, one pill. <laughs> that is very true. Thank for you the, for his whole life, though. Since you, <laughs> but it helps. Yeah, it really helps because CBD is something you have to kind of have in your system. You have to have it in your system if if you want. Oh, to, to work. Oh, okay, yeah, gotcha. It helps a little bit. Yeah, hmm. but Does you it show don't, up in drug tests. Nope. Oh, okay. Not at all because there's no THC in it. There's oh, nothing okay. harmful there. So like, it's legal. Yeah. Like, so marijuana is actually has a lot of pro benefits to it, mm-hmm. but then people also use it because the THC gets them super high and fuck and like mm. silly. Mm. I almost said the word. Do you see that? Oh, wow. See, mm. I'm learning. I'm learning. Yeah. Um, it gets you like silly and you, you don't, mm-hmm. you get in a con, like in a state of mind where you're, you're high and not, you know, and that's, it's fun or it's like alcohol, but where the CBD, you don't get that hallucinogenic effect. You just mm-hmm. get the benefits of the marijuana. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Joe you try it out. You sound like Joe Rogan. <laughs> you try DMT, bro. <laughs> I'm Joe Rogan minus the muscles. Yeah. I'm trying. No, it it it, ha- it has seriously helped. Like mm-hmm. it it does. Um, mm-hmm. Well, I use it more for like my joint pain causes me more anxiety, depression. So I if one's good, then the rest are good. Where okay, yeah, it's interesting. yeah. I mean, I've heard there's a lot of people who've told me to try it, so I don't know. You should give it a shot. Yeah. Even if you're having like, just don't take it every day. Just take it when you're like, maybe just like, see the pill, maybe not because the pill is kind of like something you, you, you take in your system and it, it takes a couple of days to kind of get regulated. Yeah. But then they also have like edibles where you can just eat something and it, like a gummy, like they have it in gummies. Okay. And you can I just feel it. like that's weed, right? It's weed without the high, like a high I, effect. I feel like I would, wouldn't trust it. I don't know. <laughs> There's no THC, I promise. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You could buy it like at CVS. Or do you got to get this it? Redner's. The statistics are in, man. Like, yeah. it's not weed. Yeah, I don't yeah know. like yeah. The, the, You can get it at Redner's. I feel like it would show up. Because I remember reading up on it, and they're like, it might show up on a drug test. If site. you buy it from someone who doesn't obviously know what they're doing, and you buy it from someone who makes it in their tub. Yeah. Yeah, but like, <laughs> oh there's this company God. called Medterra yeah. that you can buy it at a Redner's supermarket. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you feel high at all? No. 
you f- you feel calm, but oh, you don't wow. feel high. Oh wow! Like you can function at your job. Yeah. But you're like, oh, I feel a lot better right now. Yeah. So it may be a placebo. Feel, I don't know. Uh, okay. It's like taking one Xanax. I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you took ten Xanax. The yeah. CBD ain't gonna kill you. Yeah. That is crazy. <laughs> what? I cannot get over that ten Xanax. Yeah. One milligram each. Wow. Yeah. I'm, what do you do the whole time when you're playing? You just look, you like you look at your hands, or well, I feel like I'm so nervous that like the Xanax kind of like it reaches up to here, so I'm still kind of like a normal person. And then until the plane lands and I get off, and I'm like, whoa, you know. I remember I got off in Miami, and my brother took us to this really uh, nice uh, bar thing. It was like outside. We're sitting in lawn chairs, and the beach is in front of us. And this guy, this waiter came out, and he's like. He's like, what do you want to order? And my brother's like, they have buckets of Coronas. And I was like, I have a bucket of Corona. So he left, and I'm thinking, like, where is he going to put this when he gets back? <laughs> so I started digging a hole with my hands in the sand. Like, I'm going like this, and I'm digging a hole. And I'm digging in, I'm digging in. And then I was like, I look up, and my whole family's looking at me like, what are you doing? And I'm like, <laughs> no, so he has a place to. And then he came back with the bucket, and I was like, I dug this hole for you to put the, <laughs> the bucket of the. And he's like, what are you talking? <laughs> but he put it in there. He's like, he's like, okay. It, it, did Man. it keep your beer colder? No. <laughs> wow. Stupid, yeah. And then I like, drank beer and got f- more fucked up. How does that next feel with beer? Uh, you could die and get really? seizures. Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> you shouldn't do it ever, especially that amount of Xanax. So. Ten. Yeah. Uh, Heath Re- Ledger died something like that. Was like, it Xanax? He mixed Xanax with like a bunch of other shit. Sleeping, I thought Heroin. it was sleeping pills. I don't, I don't know. No, I think it, yeah, I think it was like Ambien, Xanax. Yeah. I think that's how Viagra. Jimi Hendrix, right? Sleeping pills? No, was it really? I think Bar- he choked on his own Bar- vomit. or something. Oh, I don't know. He choked on his vomit I probably it was from being Keith Moon. They all died from drugs. Oh, I thought know? Keith Moon choked on his own vomit. Oh. Janis Joplin. Well, you're not with the Olsen twins, so you're fine. Why? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah the Heath, Heath Ledger, Heath Ledger yeah. joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Too soon? No. Uh, I don't know anything <laughs> about it. Who's your favorite member of the Twenty Seven Club? Who's that? Uh, the oh, uh, if you could bring Amy one, Winehouse. if you could bring one member of the twenty seven oh, club Wynos. back, That's a yeah. Good pick. yeah, she's my favorite. Well, Amy Winehouse is very close, but Kurt, I mean, it's hard not to say Kurt Cobain. But Amy Winehouse is super talented too. Yeah, Kurt Cobain is cool. I mean, I, mean, Jimmy, I think he just came in the right time. Like, I don't know if he's as talented as like Grod like Music Amy. died when he died. Thank God. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm not a fan. But did he kill himself or was it Courtney Love? I hope it was Courtney Love. She made the right decision. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> well, comedy. Comedy. <laughs> I'm lights. a huge fan of Courtney Love. I love Courtney Love. Is that Love. Light Salon? All right, cool. Just making making sure Ben feels like he's part of it. He's just he's there's a man who's been sitting in this chair quietly with his hands folded, just now his arms just, are folded. Just watching Just you. watching us. How yeah. do you feel about that? I'm fine with it, yeah. Have you ever watched the Queen movie? The Queen movie. The new movie oh, about Queen. On. Don't talk. You're not allowed to talk. Yes. Remember Freddie's lover? Yeah. This if, guy. If he just had the mustache only. Yeah. Okay. I love I love your Freddie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he looks like That's that. Him. He looks like that actor. I'm not saying you're gay. So what if he was? And if it, it's okay if you're gay, but I'm just saying you look like the guy who played the gay lover of Freddie in the movie. I'm not saying it's disparaging. You look like the actor. He kind of looks like, uh, sort of like Al Borland in the seventies. <laughs> Tim, like the Tim 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 shirt. Yeah, yeah. Tim Tim not, how does he see with the hair like in his eyes right there? He has like a he has a weird emo thing going on. I've yeah. been begging him to. St- oh well, my god! Didn't he move. Did. He just flicked his head, and the hair stayed it exactly the same. Right where wow. it's supposed to stay. Yeah. Oh my god! There's nobody sitting there. So no. <laughs> we're just making this up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's really no one there. Yeah, there's no there. <laughs> so what are what are some things you guys have planned for this, you know, maybe upcoming year? Like what do you you have any goals for this year? I'm gonna quit comedy and take <laughs> film school. So film school. Yeah. Sorry, I'm playing footsie. I'm playing know. footsie with yeah, you over with here. This guy. Do you really want to do film school? I don't know if I'm gonna quit comedy, but um yeah, I'm gonna I, I really wanna there's like this film course thing I'm gonna check out. So Awesome. Yeah, that's always been my real dream. Comedy's always been like a I don't know why I'm doing comedy. You don't know. You're really good at it. <laughs> no, thanks. I'm no, being, no, I'm being serious. You're good at what you do. No, thanks. Yeah, no, I, I love it. I love it. I love comedy. I love all the people I've met. It's amazing. But um, I think I'm going to cut back a little bit and just try to do this uh, movie thing. Just so I want to make bed. a movie. Yeah, I want to make movies. Are you like what kind of t- what type of movies? Comedy, um, romantic, horror. I'm sick of comedy, horror stuff. Horror would be cool. 
a horror comedy or just horror? Just horror. Just horror. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I make like little short things. Horror comedy. All right. And then- Here's, all right. So I I have a few people like that I know that made horror movies. Yeah. And I said one of the most popular things right now for horror is those Crypt TV things. Do you ever watch them? No. It's on YouTube. It's called Crypt TV. I think Eli Roth is like the pro- executive producer. What do you do? And they make like it? they make like 10, 15 minute short films. And they're just like small YouTube clips. 15 minute? Or like 15 seconds? Like 15 minute. Like they're super small clip, like 10 minute, five minute videos. Okay. So like the, the popular one that everyone sees is the one where the girl's laying in bed and she looks in the hallway and the light turns off. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, they made that into a movie. Yeah. Well, that was a short film from Crypt yeah. TV. Okay. And then like, it's that weird looking face. Yeah. That's like right next to hers. Yeah. That started off as a Crypt TV f- fling. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. And they just make these short films. Did you see the one where there's a kid in bed and his da- he's like, daddy, I'm really scared. And he's like, what's wrong? He's like, I think there's somebody under the bed. And then the dad looks under the bed and it's the same kid. And he's like, daddy, there's somebody in my bed. That's creepy. And then the guy like slowly lifts his head and like, it just cuts to black. That's awesome. Yeah. It's creepy as fuck. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. It's a good idea. Yeah. But no, but there's 15 second horror movies movies yeah which are did you ever hear of those no but there's I'm, like I'm interested. you could just watch compilations of them and they're like yeah in with 15 seconds you have to make it scary and some of them are brilliant they're yeah like holy shit these guys that'd be are, cool to see if yeah. you ever if you ever do that please let me know i, like, I will share the shit out of it and help yeah. you promote that oh thanks we'll do you see. have like equipment or anything i have nothing <laughs> i have my iphone dude i fucking have shit like yeah. if you want to do it i'll help you the thing about comedy is it's just you like yeah. you don't have to depend on anybody but like movies and stuff it's just like you got to depend on getting people together and you're not paying anybody so it's mm-hmm. like you got to find other passionate people and they'd say yes people just say yes to things that's what i've realized because i'm trying yeah. to start a magazine and people a lot of a lot of people have great people have said yes but it's just hard because i'm not paying them so it's like i feel like yeah i'm taking I'm advantage the, of them you know I, what i mean so it's, i do four podcasts where people like none of us get paid yeah so i can't imagine doing that with a movie like i'm not going to be paying anybody so, so it's like so where i justify that and if i'm wrong tell me but like I can't pay people to come in like in one year I've had I've done f- well total five shows but we cut it back to four yeah and I, I've done 165 episodes in one year Holy shit. with wow. four different teams wow. and I don't pay anyone but what I do is I'm like hey guys like I just come a little prepared and I will buy the equipment like I didn't ask anyone to pay for any of the equipment yeah so everything you see at the tables is me yeah you know what I mean and then this way people are like well if he's willing to pay the equipment that I'm willing to put my time in mm. so it's kind of yeah. a give and take right am I am I right like and then like the banging beers ben has like realistically when it comes to like the first year of the show he put in a lot of money when it comes to beers so there's give and take on it Mm -hmm. so i'm willing to film it and buy the equipment to do it and he's willing to pay the money to put towards helping the content grow yeah so there's give and take so you're not no one's getting paid but you guys are working together for a common goal yeah you know what i mean it's a good idea yeah Yeah. well also with comedy is like i'm not afraid to go up and fail like i'm not afraid to with a movie i feel like I don't know. I'd be so scared. Like it's got to be perfect. So, it's got to so be I have, exactly how I, I picture it. I have a in friend who has a movie coming out that I helped in, and it's coming out very very soon. Did yeah. you play Mark Wahlberg? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did not. I I, I just oh. I just voiced in it. <laughs> oh, I okay. played a radio host, oh, like okay. a radio guy. Yeah. Realistically, I I don't have Sarah's in it. Oh okay yeah yeah, yeah. I I I have and regardless if it comes out good amazing mm-hmm. terrible i'm gonna support it yeah because regardless of what other people may say like oh they're making fun of it because of the people who are involved like i have friends who are picking on it and i have friends who are supporting it yeah. regardless they took their summer and winter out like they took a, almost a year out of their lives and they made a movie to do this yeah and no one really got paid mm-hmm. and i think that's admirable going back to what yeah. we said like you you at least fucking tried yeah you yeah. know what i mean and i and i think that's cool you know what i mean well somebody I, asked james cameron they're like how do i james cameron the movie director they're like how do i make a movie or whatever. how do we and he's like you make a movie yeah that was his advice you just do it yeah you and just if you're fucking terrible your first time you're like hey listen i'm proud like listen i can go back and watch the first fucking 20 episodes of my thing and when we first started i had these terrible fucking mics and what what were we doing we, we'd have one mic here and one mic would pick up all three of us and it would pick up all the background noise and we'd all bleed in and the fucking camera was dog oh. shit and we did fucking That's 30 episodes like that yeah you know what I mean? And then now we're at a point where everyone has their own mic and they're yeah. fucking designed to exactly what we're doing. And there's a fucking 4K camera if I wanted to, but I don't do 4K only because yeah. it's just silly. But like you grow, like you learn as you go and you have to like it goes back to the comedy thing, it goes back to the music. You have to suck for a while. Yeah. And oh, not yeah. even just suck. Like you have to go through those growing pains to get better. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I think if you're doing comedy and you're trying to do it solo, 
and you you're willing to go through that pain or yeah. that that good or good or bad. Yeah. There's nothing you're gonna do after this that's gonna phase you. I'm just yeah, being yeah. honest. Yeah. So I thought, keep I trying. About that. Everything yeah. is trying. Yeah. You know. That's if you if you really want to film stuff, like let me know. Okay. I have I have the fucking camera there. I have a camera there. I have a I have like three cameras. There's a camera there. This guy. Yeah, I have this guy. He'll hold something. You know yeah. what I mean? Like we'll help you. Like I I, I want to see. Like that's the thing that the reason I started interviews with other people yeah. is I want to fucking give the voice. Because if my thing, the way I look at it is, if this fucking explodes, yeah. I don't just make it. Everyone does because yeah. if I start making money, obviously I want to put myself back in the fuck at least green because all the shit I put in. Yeah. But like. If I watch this and someone says I like that person, mm -hmm. and then we fucking grow, like I want to grow together with people. Like I, I'm, I'm very passionate yeah. about where we come from and how we come That's from cool. very not the richest areas, but we can all fucking work with each other. Yeah. We're all creative people that have great ideas. You know what I mean? I think that'd be fun. Yeah, like awesome. I think. It's so you're like Rogan, and he's is he Red Band or is he Jamie? I don't know who he, he's never he used to do this all the time in the beginning and then he stopped showing up for interviews oh, it's actually wow. kind of, honestly I'm being honest it's actually kind of cool with him here right now yeah yeah does it make you feel comfortable hell? I'm being honest like I don't I used to let him control the soundboard but he yeah. he, he was bad at it he's really bad but like me sitting down I'm just being honest me sitting down and letting him check I don't know how the camera looks yeah. so I'm terrified like that's why I kept saying if it was recording because yeah. like there's been times where he didn't hit record oh, but no. the red lights on Growing pains. Remember yeah. how he said growing pains? Like, yeah. not everyone's good the first time. He's learning the equipment just like I am. Yeah. I spent more time with the board than he did, so he has to learn that. Um, but him being here, just, like, checking to make sure we're all in frame, that's fucking great to me. Like, I'm glad he's here. Like, Does I'm, it make you feel comfortable when your friends are around? Like, kind of. Do you think that's why Howard Cern has Robin? I agree. When he interviews, like, he's got that comfort of, like, somebody else just being there. Well, yeah. A lot of people don't realize this, too. Like, when I'm doing this, I'm doing my own audio. I'm doing my own... Like, if Ben wasn't here, there'd be yeah. me, me making sure that video was good me making sure the audio was good and then when everyone leaves i'm doing my own edits yeah so everything behind the scenes is me but i have a team behind me who help me build content you yeah. know what i mean so it, it, i'm just talking about being an awkward human being because no i don't I feel like i don't get awkward yeah like yeah that. I, well i'm a social like, butterfly if he wasn't here i probably would be a little bit more nervous like i just that, that's kind of i always feel more comfortable when there's like another person i'm gonna be honest when you when you told me that that's kind of what i figured yeah <laughs> yeah well no he Wanted to come. He wanted to come. Yeah, but yeah, I figured yeah. it helped you a little bit too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I even told Sarah when she would. She, I'm like, if you want to join, you can. Like, I told her to ask you. <laughs> oh, she didn't. But I didn't want to invite. Like, Fuck him. I didn't want to invite other people to someone else's interview. Oh, that would have been. You fine, know what I mean? Yeah. But like I told her, she if she was yeah. like whoever the comics were that night. All well, four. If I would have known, all I could have invited, invited Kyle. Sorry, Kyle. Enough. Sorry about that. We'll do it again okay. next time you do pep. Like well, next time you guys do peps, let yeah. me know, and we'll do the same thing we're doing now. Okay. Friday night, come over afterwards, cool. and we'll fucking we'll bullshit. Yeah, I felt bad. I I didn't know. I didn't know what to expect, so I, didn't, I felt bad well, like asking. Another Kyle. thing too, I always tell people is your first time here, you don't really know what to expect, yeah. Yeah. and you're quiet. And then the second time here, you're like, oh, cool, I'm more laid back. I can say this. I yeah. can do this. So yeah. I'm, I'm down. Like next time you guys do this, just let me know. You guys do it what once a month? Yeah, yeah peps. Yeah, I don't think I'll be there next month, but uh, yeah, there's a show, there's a show on February 14th. Yeah. So then in two months, yeah. Bring, whoever's doing comedy at night, bring them back. I, ha cool. I literally can mic up five people. Nice. Yeah. So let's do it. It'd be fun. Yeah, cool. You guys are funny. I like it. Thank you. Thanks. Now, um, some of your comedy stuff. I, I obviously I, I feel a little different with you because I yeah. haven't heard, physically heard oh, no, you perform. Yeah, yeah. He's not really a comedian. No, no, no. Fucking no, with you this yeah. whole time. Where Where have you derived some of your comedy from? Uh, like lately, actually. Um, I've been talking to Joey about this a bunch, and um, that's funny. You said that Cameron thing. Uh, James Cameron yeah because uh, there's like a David Mamet quote and they're like where do you get your ideas and he's like I think of them <laughs> and I think that's like but that has helped me recently because I'm like well I think of these ideas for stand up but they're not all just jokes for stand up there are other things and so now coming into this year my goal with um, stand up is to look at the influences I have and a lot of those people uh, came from improv came from sketch came from things like that so I do really really like stand up but my goal is to like reach into those other things I'm not trying to Branch like out a little become, bit. yeah become something in those or anything what I'm trying to do is uh, a lot of people say like improv gets your arms moving so yeah. when you're on stage I'm getting more comfortable on stage but I want to be able to go up and do you know whatever five minutes, 10 minutes of whatever I want to do rather than standing there. And sometimes you just sound like a comedian. You're just reading jokes that you yeah. wrote. And then you don't want to be over animated, but you yeah. want to, you want to at least put something else to it. Yeah. There is and, nuances to jokes that can take off more. Yeah. And that's the, that's the thing is just being able to like, uh, rely on raw funny rather than yeah. just, you know, I, I'm a huge fan of like the psychological, 
Like okay. when you kind of, even if you're the comic doesn't even feel like they're actually doing it. And once again, I'm not going back to you and like boosting your ego, oh. but like you and John, like mm. you guys have this thing where when people come and perform, see you perform the entire time they're watching you for me anyway, I was like, how much like going back, how much of this is really your personality or how yeah. much of this is your stick? Mm-hmm. But either way, the entire time I'm thinking about it and then mm-hmm. I'm watching you perform and then I'm trying to figure out if this is like, mm-hmm. and it makes it funnier. Like yeah. it makes it part of the gimmick. <clears throat> like, John where he tells this entire sad sad story and then yeah. I, I don't want to like but at the very end he fucking swerves you like mm-hmm. that psychological mm-hmm. aspect is fucking hilarious to mm-hmm. me like I, yeah. I like that kind of stuff yeah yeah but yeah I could definitely see that like I'm a huge fan of the office mm-hmm. I'm a big office fan Steve Carell yeah is hilarious and any situation you put him in he's funny but he also done improv he done stand up he did yeah. sketch comedy he's done it's a little bit of everything like Will Ferrell too well, it, yeah, Will, it, yeah I love was, Will Ferrell yeah well, when people say they don't like Will Ferrell, I like question them as humans. I'm like, how do you think he's not funny? Yeah. yeah. Like, there's, a, there's a great thing that Will Ferrell like got some scholarship for improv. I think it was like Second City or something. And they were like, it starts this day. And he's like, oh, I'm actually starting a line dancing class. I can't do it. Yeah. Like he was more invested in the line dancing yeah. class to like, I don't know, gain through comedy that way. He, I think it's some awesome. of the funniest stuff he does, like when you go back and watch like same with uh, Zach Galifianakis you go back and watch them in like movies or comedy some of the funniest stuff they do is when they're not even trying to be funny mm-hmm. like I watch the thing you ever see when Will Ferrell does a drum off with the drummer of Red Hot Chili Peppers no I, so I he, know what you're talking he about he does this drum off and then he plays and at the very end he's just like alright roll the credits <laughs> and just him saying like yeah. it's over yeah. just yeah. roll it like I thought it was fucking funny yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. and you could tell that just came from fucking Imp- like I just, like yeah. like I don't know, he's just a funny fucking dude. Yeah. Like, like improv the- is hard to watch though. I do understand. Like yes. you go into an improv show, sometimes you're just like, Oof. you know, yeah. like unless it, you're like whose line is that anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where they're fucking amazing at what they yeah. do. Yeah. Give us a place. Yeah. Ice cream parlor. Everyone yells that out. I'm like, what? The, who's going to ice cream parlor? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Lancaster is that is that something you can do in that area? Okay. There's a there's a place there, but I would probably just do like the one in Philly or something like yeah. that. Yeah, but how uh, far is Philly from Lancaster? An hour and ten minutes, maybe. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it takes two hours to get there though. It depends when you because it's like two and a half, oh, three hours from two. here. Is it really mm-hmm. about that? Yeah, seventy six. The traffic. Well, all right, I'm not going to talk about traffic, but anyways. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there anything else you guys want to close on that you want to talk about or get out there? Um, I mean, we could talk about traffic. Um, 76. <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, it's a 12 30. Blue route. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to keep you super late. You know Drive I mean? time. Um, no, nothing I could think of. I had a good time. Thanks for having me. I appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for letting us put him on here. Yeah. Thanks for Like uh, I said, next time you guys are doing your thing, let me know. Shoot me a message. I will be doing a beer show before this once again. Okay. But like if you guys get it like the same time, if you, uh, as long as you're cool being here that late, like you show up yeah. around 10, 30, 11, I'm cool with sitting down and talking as long as you want. Cool. I'm going to be up anyway. Yeah. But right. um, any guys you want to plug, anything you want to get out there to like let people go see your stuff? Uh, the Joe DeRosa thing on uh, 27th, January 27th. Uh, I think it's a Sunday. We're both opening. It's a Monday. It's a, it's a Monday. Yeah. Is what I meant to say. Um, yeah. I can't think of anything off the top of my head now. I, yeah. I never promote anything. It's just... No? Yeah. I'm do, you not, like a, am I to, do you have like, like a Facebook page people can go to or just your personal? Yeah. You can go there. I post when I host the mics and stuff like that. What Do you have any content online that people can watch? Um... <laughs> I have YouTube channels, but we'll, we're not going to talk about those. But um, Joey eats puppies every Monday night. Uh, well, I host every other Monday, but every Monday night there's a mic at uh, the Lizard Lounge in Lancaster. Seven thirty sign ups, eight o'clock show. Yeah. How about you? Uh, same thing. The DeRosa show on the twenty seventh. They have shows in like Philly and stuff like that. But that one's really important. Um, twenty seventh, Joe DeRosa opening. It's a Monday. It's, it's a Monday. This guy will be there. It's going to be a good show. I think it's like ten bucks. There'll probably be a mic after. I don't know. Come out. It should be good. And we're going to do that Craigslist thing again that we were talking about. Oh, yeah. So that's keep an eye thing. out for that. Working on the Craigslist to keep doing that. Hopefully. One of the best shows. Hopefully that been some on. hours change for me soon. And then I can make it out to a Friday night pep thing. It's oh, tough because yeah. I do like four different shows. So it's hard for me to get the fuck out of my yeah. house. Like this table is where I fucking live and eat and do everything. Yeah. Um, but uh, thank you guys so it's much for coming. Table. Just do me a favor. Send me your links so okay. I can put them all in the description below. Cool. And then you guys can click on the description below and go follow them and see everything they're doing. Um, don't do that. Get your finger off. It's getting ready to shut it off. Yeah, don't do that. Um, yeah, so that'll wrap it up for everyone. Thank you guys so much. Um, and we're going to close out with thank you, Vito DiPiro. Thank you guys so much. Thanks, dude. Thanks. Living my life.
just living my life, just living my life. It's my time. Just living my life, just living my life, just living my life. It's my time. And athletic at the peak of my life. Slipped a couple times. I was speeding on ice. Never took a risk. Then you cheat in your life. You never took a risk. Then you cheat in your life. It's a hole in my heart, probably never be filled. And part of me thinks it'll never be healed. I lost some of my family to the dope. Overflow my mind with positive vibes, that's how I cope. They ask if I stop, I tell them no. Speak foul on my name, clean your mouth, that was so. I'm crying right now while I'm writing this shit. I'm dying inside just from fighting this shit. Amidst all the darkness, I see light in this bitch. Give me one small spark and I'm igniting this bitch.